I'm Persilays and you are watching episode 15 of Love at First Scent coming to you today from Facebook. I think, as per usual, we should start by smelling a perfume. And I'm going to do something that we haven't really done here before because I, I'm, I would like to start with a perfume that is new to me but probably isn't going to be very new to a lot of you out there because it's been around for about a year and a half, certainly well over a year, and it's this one here. So perhaps we could join in with this one together because um, I would like to start by smelling Stash from Sarah Jessica Parker. And if you can just bear with me for two seconds while I bring up this feed. Um, hi, Joe. Uh, per Joe says, hi, Persilays, what do you have in store for us today? Stay tuned and you will find out. But I need my tablet to cooperate with me here. Peggy says hello. Hi, hi everybody. I, I will say hello to all of you um, after I've done the first perfume because I, I, it's just a good idea for me to kind of get straight into it and give people a chance to tune in. But a massive hello to all of you. Right, tablet is working. We are good to go. And like I said, I wanted to start with stash. So if you have any thoughts on this because you smelt it already, Joe says heard so much about it can never find a bottle in anywhere in my neck of the woods. Okay, interesting. I forget where you are, Joe. I'm sure you've told me, but I, my mind's just gone blank. Um, and this came out towards the end of 2016. Sarah Jessica Parker, as a lot of you will know, is one of the sort of more respected celebrity names in the world of perfume, largely because of her first scent, Lovely, which uh, came out uh, about 13 years ago. I'm pretty sure it was 2005. Um, a, a deservedly well-regarded scent. I, I still think it, it works extremely well. It's a fairly familiar musk, patchouli, um, aromatic composition, not miles away from Coco Mademoiselle. Incidentally, the creation of it was the subject of the Chandler Burr book, um, The Perfect Scent, which... How many of you have read The Perfect Scent, by the way? Because if you haven't, it is well worth your time. Both of Chandler Burr's perfume books, I would say, are well worth your time. The Perfect Scent, unless I'm mistaken, and somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, um, tells the parallel stories of the creation of Sarah Jessica Parker's Lovely, on the one hand, and also Jardin sur le Nil, from Hermès on the other hand and and Burr does a very very good job of contrasting the two different approaches because Sarah Jessica Parker's scent of course was made effectively well not effectively but literally it was made by Coty um, and the the Hermès approach was very different because they had their their um, in-house perfumer Jean-Claude Eleanor and from that point onwards Sarah Jessica Parker became a bit of a name in perfume or at least in celebrity scents and then the um, I think she parted ways with Coty, and this was the first of her non-Coty scents. There's even um, a flanker now, as far as I'm aware. I'd need to look up and see what the flanker is. But blah de blah de blah. One thing led to another. I was writing an article about something that wasn't in any way related to Stash or Sarah Jessica Parker, and then I suddenly thought, gosh, I really ought to try it, and. I got it and then I thought, Vitaly says good evening from Stockholm, good evening to you. I'm really sorry Vitaly, uh, well I'll say why I'm sorry to Vitaly, <laughs> I will explain why I'm apologising to Vitaly when we get to the classic segment of this, of this episode, so I'll, I'll, I'll try not to jump the gun yet. Anyway, Stash from Sarah Jessica Parker is the first thing we're going to smell on Love at First Scent here on what is a, a, a Friday evening in the south of England variable weather and you know I always like to, to talk about the weather um, it hasn't rained uh, Al says nice to catch you live nice to be caught thank you very much for catching me oh look it comes it comes in a pouch interesting do feel free to let me know what you think of this if you've already tried it by the way comes in a pouch and I'm almost beginning to wonder if it's leaking because I'm getting a very strong smell already, so I'd better just open this carefully. No, that seems fine. Doesn't look as though there is a leak, but very strong smell. Um, interesting bottle. You know I'm not a packaging freak. I think you all know that very well anyway. I would say that this is a, a curious example of, of taking a fairly ordinary standard bottle and making it look not half bad. That bit of black tape that's 
ta taped across the bottle. Diagonally is quite interesting. The sort of handwriting touch is not bad. Um, not too bad. What do we think? Do we like this bottle? You're all being very, very quiet now. That's probably because I said to you I wouldn't say hello to you until until um, until after the first perfume. Right, let me label my blotter uh, and let us see what we make of this first one. Stash from Sarah Jessica Parker, in case you have just tuned in to episode 15 of Love and First Scent. Right, here we go. Where can I put that? Let me pop that here. I don't know if you can still see that clearly. Right. Ooh. Very, very, very herbaceous start. Um, almost green, but very pine forest. Uh, Jacqueline, is it Jacqueline? Says good afternoon from. How do you say the name of where you are in Georgia? Is it Duluth or Dulles? Oh, this is really bad. This is this is. I need I need a geography degree to be able to do these broadcasts with you. We'll go with Duluth. Duluth. Anyway, Georgia. United States of America. Thank you very much for tuning in from Georgia. Yes, this is this is a pine forest sprinkled with some kind of really, really strong tarragon salad dressing. It makes it makes you want to eat. Uh, Aglia says hello. Hi, Aglia. It makes you want to eat a pine forest, and and you'd think that. Eating the pine forest with this with this amazing tarragon dressing would be would be a healthy and sensible thing to do. There's something that there's even something of something quite plasticky and almost styrofoamy, but not not in a bad way. I mean, it's certainly interesting. It's certainly not um, the most obvious opening to what is, I think, a pretty affordable scent. I mean, th this isn't what you would call, in inverted commas, a luxury product by any means. And, okay, if we're getting pine, then I suppose that Angeline says hello from Singapore. Thank you very much for tuning in, Angeline. I know it's not always easy for you if I do them if these broadcasts later. Singapore, actually, I'm thinking, what time must it be in Singapore? Uh, what, like 11 p.m., maybe? Something like that, 10 p.m.? Um, I was going to say incense, um, together with the pine. Definitely something very, very herbal. Midnight in Singapore. Wow, that, I'm really, really grateful. That, I'm grateful to everybody for tuning in, but people tuning in at midnight. Roxana says, I heard it smells like pencil shavings, probably on the skin. Maybe. Well, pencil shavings is usually cedar. If you remember the... Uh, Gucci Puram. I'm, I've, I've probably mentioned Gucci Puram so many times. The one for, from by Michel Almar Almarac from the time when Tom Ford was the creative director at Gucci. Um, the very, very ambery, incensey one. That had a strong cedar note and that smelt a lot like pencil shavings. I'm not getting that massively, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if there is a kind of cedary dryness in there, um, or, or a, a dry cedar-like material, I should say. But incense, maybe something vetty there like and you know what i'm thinking as well this is not very very conventionally uh hannah says hello hi hannah this is not a very conventionally obviously overtly feminine composition um and again top marks to sjp i should also at this point admit that um Sarah Jessica Parker is one of these people whose professional life has has completely passed me by because, here's a confession, I, I do not watch a huge amount of television. Uh, Roxana says, I like better what you're detecting than pencil shavings. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I don't watch a huge amount of television. No, I, I just broadcast on Facebook, you see. I'm too busy to watch TV. <laughs> no, not really. I'm, I'm a film person, but not so much a TV person. And... I am aware that Sarah Jessica Parker has largely made her name through TV. Um, I was a bit more aware of her back in the 90s when she made a few films. I remember thinking that she was great in uh, Mars Attacks, the Tim Burton movie. 
but 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 she isn't a, a kind of cultural figure to me so much. And I know there were Sex in the City movies, but they were obviously spin-offs of the TV program, and I didn't see those either. So so weirdly enough, to me, Sarah Jessica Parker is this person who's done some acting, but actually has made a name for herself in the celebrity perfume world. And 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 I think of her more in that sense. And she has somehow managed to preserve a, a commendable amount of credibility in the perfume world because it, it's not that easy when you think of most other celebrities who've um, given their names to a perfume we don't really think of them as perfume fans or perfume aficionados in any way whereas Sarah Jessica Parker has somehow managed to retain um, that, 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 that facade, maintain that facade there's a sweetness coming through as well. I quite like this, and do you know what? In a funny kind of way, it's almost making me think of, um, oh, this is really bad though, because I'm gonna forget the name of it. The, the, the Yup scent, or Yup scent, that came out last year that was quite good. Was it called Wow? That was it, Wow, with an exclamation mark. And there was something about this bottle and the color of the juice that immediately made me think of Wow. Now, I don't have a huge amount on this fragrance, uh, but what I do have, I can very quickly look at here. Right, so apparently this is supposed to be the more edgy and different, sorry, the, the, the edgy, naughty, subversive sibling of her most popular fragrance, Lovely. Announced as sexy and raw. Thank God it's not... No, I'm not going to say. Announced as sexy and raw, Stash is an aromatic woody composition suitable for both women and men. Yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, as inspiration for this fragrance, Sarah noted body odours. Well, we can all note body odours, can't we? Church, leather, and a few masculine perfumes that she wore that would include notes of incense and vetiver. Okay. D d d not really body odours here, except for, you know, maybe people who've just washed themselves. Uh, begins with notes of fresh grapefruit, black pepper, and aromatic sage. Okay, sage, tarragon, yeah, fine. Sage is probably more urinous than tarragon, so I'd go along with that. Its hot notes include cedar, there we go, patchouli, ginger lily, uh, <laughs> ginger lily, and pistachios, laid on a warm, woody base of libanum, otherwise known as uh, frankincense, masoya wood, vetiver, and musk. And apparently, it was made by perfumers from IFF. And I'm going to say I'm going to say thumbs up to this one for the moment. Let's see how it does later on, but not a daft piece of work by any means. So we are one perfume down, which means I can take a breath, read a comment. Alain says, Hi from Montreal, I see a box of Xenia's new narrowly. Alain is intrigued. Well spotted, there it is. Perhaps we will get around to it. Right, let me bring the feed back on my tablet so I can make sure I don't miss any um, uh, comments is the word I'm looking for. But thank you very much for, oh, hang on, I have missed a comment. Roxana says, after smelling it, would you put it in the celebrity category? Do you know what? I'm gonna give you a very simple answer. Yes, because it's a celebrity scent. Uh, let's not get into the whole thing of what is the style of a celebrity scent because we could be here forever so yeah let, let's say it's a celebrity scent but let's say maybe it's a little bit more like a celebrity scent from Etat Libre d'Orange rather than a celebrity scent from Justin Bieber uh, although I think all of his are gone haven't they they have they all gone there, there, there was a whole there was a cull of a lot of those wasn't there I think a lot of the Beyonce's went Kylie Minogue David, David Beckham's, David Beckham's is still around because apparently uh, Beckham's ones still sell very well. And unless I'm mistaken, the license for those is still held by Coty. But anyway, now I'm being very, very rude. Thank you very much to everybody for, for tuning. I need to start this again. Thank you very much to everybody for tuning in to episode 15 of Love at First Scent. Today coming uh, from Facebook Live with me, Persilase. Very quickly, you know the drill. The idea here is that whereas on the blog, I take my time and uh, publish reviews that I've thought about for a long time. Here we do the opposite. We kind of smell things for the first time and I give you my instant impressions, always honest instant impressions. Um, so if you are watching live, 
please feel free to interact and ask questions and make comments and, and pass judgment on my taste in shirts. Um, please give me hearts and thumbs up because they're very, very helpful and useful and um, self-validating as well. If you are watching after the live broadcast, feel free... Oh, I can see a thumbs up going up. Uh, if you're watching after the live broadcast, do still feel free to leave questions because I try to answer them. And then also you will be aware that a few days after uh, this, the, the live broadcast, I um, put the video up onto YouTube or vice versa because, of course, the previous episode, episode 14, went out live on YouTube and then got transferred to Facebook. So no matter where I do the live one, I will always try to make sure that it ends up on both. This time, I said in a few days it'll be on YouTube, I'm going to try and be really, really quick and put it up on YouTube probably tomorrow because, exceptionally, this time, the very next episode of Love at First Scent, which will be episode, hmm, let me think, 16, the very next one I'm going to do the day after tomorrow, so this Sunday at 5 p.m. UK time, so the very same time as now, I'm going to do the next episode of Love at First Scent, except that one will go out live on YouTube. I think I'll, I'm going to keep doing this alternating thing, just to be fair. Why am I doing the next one so quickly? Because there's quite a lot to talk about. There are quite. This is the time of year when lots of releases are coming out. And also added to that, um, Hildegun says good afternoon from Trondheim, Norway. Good afternoon to you. That's amazing. I love the fact that, look, we've got the whole world covered pretty much. We've got Singapore all the way to Georgia. This is incredible. Anyway. What was I saying? Lots of releases coming out, and also I am going because of um, other commitments through the time of year when I become insanely busy, and I actually thought I'd better plan ahead because from round about the last week of this month until pretty much sort of end of June, beginning of July, I'm not going to have a lot of spare time. So I thought if I get two episodes out of the way now, then you can watch them at your leisure, either on YouTube or Facebook. You don't have to tune in live if you don't want to. I won't cry for longer than five minutes if you don't tune in live maybe 10 and then at least that'll kind of keep you going for a bit so you heard it here first because the sun chose not to cover this um the next episode of love at first send the day after tomorrow on youtube live at this time 5 p.m phew right um i don't think i've missed any comments uh so i think we should move straight on um what I would like to do now is, in, in keeping, um, Arafat says, hi, who's that? Who are you? Sorry, would you stop waving at me? I have no idea who this person is. Let's just block him from Facebook. And that's really harsh, actually. Everybody meet my best friend in the whole world. That's who that is, waving. So you can, you can all be horrible to him now and, 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 and ask him how it is that he puts up with me. In the spirit of um, doing things differently, what I would like to do is actually tell you a little bit about now where's my prop tell you a little bit about these people now if i were to do that would anybody know who they are you can see straight away that they are based in luck now now our thoughts now giving me heart oh go away i lied you're not my best friend in the world you're not even actually a friend at all i'm just i'm just associate with you so i can have a place to stay when i go to dubai <laughs> um, I love this bag, by the way. Look at that. Can you imagine uh, a, a slogan like this being on a carrier bag in, in Europe? Um, giving reasons to thank God for the wonderful sell sense of smell. I mean, I, I sort of approve of it, but amazing. Right. Um, and look, our, our France is going to be leaving comments all the time on this now. <laughs> uh, just ignore him, everyone, or just tell him to stop disturbing us. A little while ago, I um, had the amazing opportunity to uh, travel around India again for a little bit, for the third time in my life. Absolutely spectacular country, always love going back, but this time for the first time ever I went to Lucknow. Um, fascinating city. Um, it, 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 it's, its main street, its main road at the moment is rather torn up by the fact that they're building a metro, so never mind, but you can still see the, the 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 beautiful architecture and Lucknow is the only location in the world of this shop. Uh, I'm probably going to get the pronunciation wrong. It's Sukhanth Co. And apparently Sukhanth just be now now Arafat's going to be judging my pronunciation of this word as well. But you can keep your thoughts to yourself, Mr. Ali Khan. 
That word that comes before the co apparently means fragrance, so it's fragrance company. And this is a perfumery that is well over 150 years old. Their sole shop, as I said, is in Lucknow. Um, it's, it's been family owned throughout. Um, I forget which perfumer they're on at the moment, but I met the perfumer when I was there. When I, when I do this on um, Facebook, uh, no, I am doing it on Facebook now. When I do this on YouTube, or at some point, somewhere, I'll try and get a picture up. Uh, I, I, can, I suppose I can put a picture up um, when, I, when I leave a comment after this video is done. Doesn't matter. In some way, I will try and get a picture up of this perfumery so that you can see their setup. It's not, it's not very large at all, but, but anybody who's serious in any way about perfume knows about it. When I was there, the wife of some famous actor was there stocking up on her perfumes. She lives in Mumbai, but she goes to Lucknow as often as she can so that she can stock up on their room scents and their incense sticks, amazing incense sticks. And they have these gorgeous perfumes. Now, you don't need to worry too much if you find what I'm telling you enticing because they do uh, they do do mail order and they reckon that they ship to the entire world. So there they are again. I'll put the link up at the end so you can see, but you can you see it's just the company, the name of their company, .com, so sukanko.com. But a perfume of theirs that I would particularly love to tell you about is this one called Musk. Oh, here we go, Musk Amber. Angeline says, was this place mentioned in a book or something fairly recently? Sounds familiar. I don't know. Perhaps it was fairly recently. Does anybody know? Bit of a freaky coincidence if it was. So Musk Amber. I went to their perfumery, as I say, and I got chatting with the perfumer who was also working there. And so, so was his son, who's also a trained perfumer. His son trained uh, in the UK. And I'm pretty sure that the, 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 the father, the one I was talking to, was called VJ, Mr. VJ. And I said to him, what's the, what's the sort of, you know, for somebody who's a real perfume fan, what's the perfume that you think I really should smell something really, really old and classic? And he immediately said, musk amber. And I'm pretty sure that he said it was made by his grandfather's grandfather. Um, it, and, and there was absolutely no hesitation at all. I had to buy it. This stuff is it, it's just so gorgeous. And he immediately um, understood what I meant when I said, you know, something classic, the kind of thing that maybe isn't made anymore. Uh, it is it is oil based. Roxana says real musk. No, no, no. They, 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 they well, I don't think so. I think I think I did ask him that it won't be real musk. Um, it, it's a perfumery that uses all sorts of. Oh, if you can hear the siren, they're coming to get me. Um, it's a perfumery that uses completely modern aroma chemicals as well. Um, but because they're catering to a different market with different tastes, um, their compositions will end up being different. I'm going to try and get some of this oil composition onto the blotter with the rollerball. Um, I don't think their entire range is available online, um, but the last time I looked, this one, the Musk Amber, was. So seriously, if, if you like the idea of something old school animalic, uh, Ambreen Khan is watching. This is like a reunion of... <laughs> if you've got nothing better to do on a Friday than watching your old friend rabbit on about perfume. I didn't say that. Ambreen Khan, you are extremely welcome. It was Laura Palmer's dad. Um, right, so Musk Amber from Sukanko. I just realized what I did there. Okay, that was not a Twin Peaks spoiler. Going out to the entire world. We're allowed to do spoilers for something that's like well over 20 years old now, aren't we? It wasn't Laura Palmer's dad at all. Not at all, trust me. I have no idea who Laura Palmer is, nor her dad. Musk Amber from Sukhanthko. Um, oh, oh, it's like so powerful. So powerful and also so beautifully blended that it isn't easy to unpick at all. Um, Yes, obviously, there is a huge, huge musk note, um, but not so much. Um, and Green Khan says, it's about amber musk, I have to watch it. Oh, God. Ladies and gents, my friends are obviously in comedian mode today. The, the joke there is that amber is what we would call her for short because her name's Umbreen. Please forgive my friends. 
go and watch Twin Peaks reruns Amber. Um, huge Amber note, but not um, not the sort of laundry detergent. See, you've confused me now. Huge musk note, but not the sort of laundry detergent musks that you would get from um, more European scented fragrances. Um, and yet, it wouldn't be fair to say that it's... Okay, it's animalic, but it's not, it's not fecal. So it doesn't smell as though it's got a massive civet note, but it's animalic in the sense that it's kind of got that... And we've, we've, had, we've discussed this before on these episodes, where, for example, somebody's hair is just the right level of unwashed. And so you're really kind of getting the smell of their body rather than the smell of, you know, whatever kind of shampoo or conditioner, etc., that they use. So it's a very intimate smell. Um, but in this one, it happens to be voluminous. It, it's got huge volume. And yes, again, there is an amber in there, but it, it doesn't smell like, you know, it doesn't smell like you're kind of burying your nose in a huge bowl of Shalimar. So it's not very obviously vanillic. It's not very obviously sweet. It's not very obviously powdery, even though those elements are there. So, th th this, is, this is a kind of grand staircase of a perfume. You're immediately transported back into the sort of 20s, 30s, 40s, when, when people, or we like to think that people weren't afraid of having presence. So this is, you know, if it were a woman, it would be somebody in just the most incredibly eye-catching gown, maybe made of some very, very textured fabric like I don't know, velvet, and then a huge statement brooch. But at the same time, it could still be masculine, you know? So somebody who's just got the most classically cut dinner jacket with tails, but, you know, beautiful um, satin lapels. I mean, ev everything is just large, large, large. And it's, you know, these figures are there at the, at the top of this incredible grand staircase. Let's say it's a marble staircase, you know? It, it, everything is grandiose and the staircase sweeps down and the butlers murdered somebody in the cellar, not Laura Palmer's dad. Um, and it also smells of, from this perspective here, you know, here I am sitting um, in the south of England on a day that started off nice, but it's kind of turning quite cold. So from that perspective, this smells of faraway lands and heat and it's got, kind of got the sense of underfloor heating in the sense that it's got its own internal heat source. So some, some perfumes kind of make me think as though their substances in them have been kissed and caressed by the sun, whereas this is this kind of volcano. So there you go, you know, it's like, I don't know, if you can, if you can imagine Jessica Rabbit as a classy real person crossed with a volcano standing at the top of this amazing marble staircase in in a in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a, I don't know in a palace that puts the Taj Mahal to shame, can you tell I like this stuff? I I was just blown away, and I and I said I said to the perfumistrator, I said you know I, I must have a bottle of this, and do look it up. Um, but if you don't like it, don't hold it against me. But although I think I think you will find the experience of trying it most interesting. Peggy says any spices, cardamom and clove, perhaps, more than likely. Um, out of those two, I would probably say more clove than cardamom, because it doesn't seem to have that coolness of cardamom, but it may well have something in there for contrast. It is beautifully blended, so that you don't, you're not really able to pick out anything in particular. And yet it isn't a mess. Um, it's got a very, very, very strong personality. And and I, I actually wore it, that you realise why in in India, in the Middle East, you realize why so many of their perfumes are oil-based, because in those hot temperatures, and when I was in India, it was really, really baking hot, um, the oil, those oil-based compositions really stick to your skin much better than alcohol-based sprays do, and you just get these amazing wafts of gorgeousness. Um, Ambreen says you should be a writer. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, and you should so be a comedian. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm <laughs> Um, and just to finish off about Sukhanthko, because I really, really urge you very strongly to check them out. 
They also do these fantastic soli floors, like this one, um, Gulbahar, uh, and there's Ambreen and Arafat now judging me on my pronunciation of these words. This one, I'm pretty sure, hang on, let me remind myself, I think this was the, the rose. Yes, just the most, most, most heartbreaking um, rose soli floor. And I remember having, on just on this trip, I was wearing it one morning, having breakfast at the hotel we were staying in. And, you know, oh, only in a place like India does the waiter come up to you. Not only does he say, you're wearing a beautiful perfume, sir, but he says, you're wearing a beautiful rose perfume, sir. And I thought, geez, how many waiters in the UK would be able to recognize that you're wearing a rose perfume? So their rose one is great. Hang on, I'm gonna wreck my set here. And then this one was the, yes, the jasmine. Um, Gajra, I guess it was called. Really, really great jasmine soli floor. So well blended, not too indolic, not too tobacco-y, not too banana-y. The, the, they really know what they're doing, those guys. And then this was one of the new ones. I, I, had to, I had to buy lots of this stuff for myself. There are a few others that I bought as well. And no, Ambreen, I didn't bring any back for you from from India when I saw you because you can, you can go home and get these anytime, so sorry. Um, and this one was a newish one, uh, which I think is called Jashna Oud. Um, and I was intrigued by this one because it was like a sweeter, rosier, um, maybe kind of more ch childy, caramelly, stickier version of Francis Kirchion's oud. Um, so that 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 um, that immediately had to go into the shopping bag. And and in case you are wondering, in comparison with the sorts of scents that you know we might be used to be might be used to buying in shops in you know in UK, the rest of Europe, etc. These are very affordable. They also do a very good uh, pure sandalwood oil, as well as what they very openly admit is a synthetic sandalwood oil, which is very good. Ambreen says, I'm not Indian. Yes, I know you're not Indian, but... Oh, gosh. Actually, she's lying. Everybody, Ambreen is Indian. <laughs> this is terrible. You're hijacking my show. Um, so, Sukanthko. Here's a final plug for them. Go on their website, check out, see if they ship to your country. They say that they ship all over the world. Here it is, and I'll do a little link at the end, but cannot recommend them enough, honestly. So, we are still here with me, Persilaise, uh, watching episode 15 of Love at First Scent, coming live to you from Facebook. And seeing as this kind of counted as a request from Alain, who's all the way over in Canada. Alain, I think we should go with your one, shouldn't we? Uh, right, Peggy says, you had me at Sandalwood, planning next holiday now. But you don't even have to go there, even though, absolutely. Have you ever been to India, Peggy? Miss Kerry Bell says, says, heart eyes. In, in, in response to what? What is it that got you? I'm gonna go with this one, Alain, because you said that you were intrigued by the Aqua di Neroli from Ermenegildo Zegna. So let's have a sniff. Are you still watching, Ala? We're doing this just for you. Um, the Zegnas are... The Zegnas are interesting. I very much like... Um, well, usually speaking, you know, there are some that I don't like, but, but generally speaking, I give a thumbs up to the things that they do more exclusively. So, um, <laughs> Alain says, you can fill in your own voice the way, Alain says, yes, indeed, I am still watching. Um, the last year they did the, was it last year? I'm pretty sure it was the Elements of Man. Uh, and I think I covered some of those here and I wrote about them on the blog. Really liked Strength. That was my favorite from that collection. They're, they're more kind of mainstream, non-exclusive ones. Some I can take or leave. They're usually quite well done. Uh, there was a sort of, I want to say an irisy cologne that worked quite well. But, 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 but you know, whatever. They are certainly a brand that is worthy of, of our attention. And this is a brand new one. I don't think it's even actually available. Alain says, I'm wearing Xenia Indian Spice right now. And Persian Saffron just came in. Oh yes, of course, because you told me that you ordered it. How freaky is that? So. I'm guessing because it just came in, you haven't tried it yet, but you must let me know what you think of it. Uh, posing for thumbnail. Um, this is the Aqua di Neroli, so let us have a look. Italy, Neroli, Xenia, should be good. 
so masculine yes yeah. Italian masculinity it must have sharp lines squares because we don't want to have girly curves because we're men and we're, and we're Italian and you know we do manly things like cry for our mums okay narrowly how are we doing for time by the way I have no idea it's not telling me right now I have to check it out later <clears throat> uh, th this will be an interesting one because narrowly is a horrendously expensive ingredient um, and very easy to do badly uh, just for the very very few of you I'm sure who don't know um, it's the, the flower from the orange tree and um, it smells not particularly orangey it actually can smell quite funky and animalic because it, it is technically a white flower so um, think of orange blossom okay here we go <clears throat> I was being sneery about this I do quite like the bottles but they're so uber masculine they're they're almost they're almost trying too hard aren't they anyway where can we pull that let's let's with Sarah sorry Sarah Jessica Parker otherwise known as Ambreen Khan um, Ah, lovely opening actually, very convincingly narrowly like, which means that it's, <laughs> sorry, I... <laughs> that, that, that funny little noise I made there, the, ah, that's what you want from a narrowly aqua, you know, from something that's lighter, because it's meant to be uplifting, it's meant to put a smile on your face, it's meant to be cologne-like, and it's meant to be something almost cuddly soft you know um the, there are there are colognes orange blossomy colognes that uh people in mediterranean countries you know particularly spain actually will use on very very young children they'll splash on very young children because they're just so beautifully uplifting and you know what just a few minutes ago i was talking about the the indian perfume feeling as though it has its own internal heat source narrowly definitely feels as though it is receiving all its beauty and heat from the sun um, Roxana says how does a bad narrowly perfume smell now there's a question I can't think of an example at the moment just depressing I suppose it, 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 it doesn't give you that immediate uplift it, it maybe might smell too mothbally or maybe maybe a little bit too saline um, but this one immediately just makes me think of, you know, for example, tearing open the wipes, the hand wipes of um, 4711. Alain says, Zenia already had a Mediterranean Neroli in its Asenze collection that was gorgeous, herbal and mossy. Yes, you're right. You're right. And I had forgotten that. And I'm sure I even tried it because I think I think I had a sample of a lot of their Ascenses, but they tended to be a little bit bulkier, didn't they? They tended to be a little bit more serious. And actually, that's a good way of answering Roxana's question. I'm not sure that you can really do narrowly and serious, heavy, substantial, bulky. I think if you're going to do it, you have just got to throw the ingredient to the wind as it say and and as it were and say you know we're just going to do this cologne thing um we're not necessarily going to bother with trying to make it last too long because that's not the point um this is this this is actually not at all miles away from we're gonna you know narrowly portofino from tom ford which also has got that soapiness you know you, you kind of feel as though you want to cover your body in this and this is how you would like to feel as soon as you've emerged from the swimming pool and you've ordered your fruit cocktail you know you, you, you would almost want your swimming pool um Saad Khan who could that be <laughs> Saad Khan says love narrowly however doesn't seem to last on smokers well then stop smoking jeez easy solution to that one no actually to be fair um, it's not that it doesn't last on smokers. It, it just doesn't last on on anybody in particular because it because it is a more fleeting note, and and as I was saying, um, attempts to make it last longer usually fail. Now, 
a brand that did a good job of it, although, what's the best way of saying this? If you've tried cologne indelible, indelible cologne from Frederick Mao, that tries to take a narrowly orange blossom note and make it last, last like forever plus a few more centuries. But you can you can completely feel that it's doing this with a, a whole load of synthetics. But but th that's okay. It works because it's an amazingly constructed perfume. But that is an exception. It takes somebody like Frederick Mal. And Saad Khan walked into that one. Yes, you did. But because you always treat me to great meals, I'll let you off. And apologies again to everybody else who's watching who do doesn't know what's happened. This is turning out to be like a reunion of old friends and their husbands. Um, but but you're very welcome anyway. I suppose that, I suppose it makes this episode more entertaining. Does it make it entertaining or does it make it more annoying? Alain, what do you think? Um, so... Cologne de la Ville from Frederic Mal does a good job of making it last forever, but that is an exception. This so far has got that lovely fleeting, you know, catch that moment on the wind before it's gone, um, ephemeral sense. And, ladies and gents, we have a press release. Introducing Xenia Aquadinarily. Let's get to the let's get to the crunch here. Introduces Arcadinarily for the Xenia man, who is both modern and confidently stylish, with a touch of indulgence. The original Acqua di Bergamotto was inspired by cool breezes and lush green fields. Aquadinarily presents a new, fresh interpretation of this Xenia classic, with prismatic, fresh ingredients. No, no light splitting going on there. With prismatic fresh ingredients steeped in the heritage of the Mediterranean coast, the blend is made with Xenia's own Italian bergamot that is exclusively harvested in Calabria, uh, Calabria, Italy, yeah, thanks for that, to produce an exceptional quality scent befitting the Xenia man. I had one of the best pizzas of my life in Calabria. Just thought I'd share that with you. Madame Persolais and I actually very often sort of have pizza and say, not like the one we had in Calabria. Anyway, gr grown exclusively for the Xenia family, Xenia Bergamot and Petit Grand Bigarard capture the sun-drenched effervescence of the Italian seaside with a refreshing zest of lemon. Yet yeah, freesia and dewy leaves impart a soft fluidity to the citrus introduction for a rippling shine. A little bit like the shine on my forehead when the lights are up. Rippling shine. Look. A classic aromatic heart of lavandin, cypress and rosemary adds cool woodiness, so classic um, cologne ingredients, a cool woodiness to the invigorating spice of Neroli, the invigorating spice of Neroli, okay, try putting some Neroli in your korma, for strength and energy. Violet leaves and watermelon further facet the fragrance with a green crunch and refreshing splash. Yeah, thank goodness there isn't like a heavy amount of anything watermelon, watermelony, but there is something aquatic, not overdone at all. So don't freak out, Alain. The confident ease of the scent emanates from earthy woods, cypriol heart and tree moss, while musk and sandalwood offer golden warmth to ocean sprayed seaweed. Um, yum. <laughs> for a sensation of glistening sun-kissed skin. Okay, I'm being a bit facetious because why not? It's a press release for goodness sake. But yeah, I, actually I, I, I buy pretty much all of that. Like I said, you know, it's swimming pools, having a gorgeous cocktail, uh, the sun, and then, you know, going out for a fantastic meal somewhere. Alain says, Grazie mille, Mr. Persilés, for the narrowly. We'll get back to you with a Persian saffron. You are more than welcome. H hang on, how do you say it? The nada Spanish. What do they say in Italian? Um, niente. Is it just niente? Yeah. No, but do they say that? I can't remember now. And just in case you're interested, in the UK, uh, Aquadinarily will retail exclusively at John Lewis um, from the 1st of June. So still a little while to go, but I like it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Please keep the hearts and thumbs up and thumbs down <laughs> coming if you like. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we, I think, will probably be able to do two more. Why isn't this thing telling me what the time is? Because I just need to, uh, three quarters of an hour already. Honestly, I can just talk behind proverbial off the proverbial. Um, 
If you are watching after the live broadcast, either on Facebook or YouTube, please feel free to leave a comment. And I've said it before, I'll, I'll just say it again now. The next episode of this is actually going to be coming out the day after tomorrow. So yes, this Sunday, the 13th of May, at 5 p.m. UK time, which will be midday um, New York time, which will be 8 p.m. UAE time, in case somebody wants to... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not being negative actually either way. it's great that you've, you've, you've taken the time to watch um, but what was I saying yes and that one will be coming live from YouTube not Facebook although it will eventually go back to it will transfer a copy will transfer to Facebook so this is where I have to say sorry again to Vitali. Anne says it's Mother's Day in the US is it really ah so I have to think of something maybe I should do my classic one, something quite mumsy or mothery. I didn't know it was Mother's Day. So in advance, happy Mother's Day to, well, especially to all mums in the US, but how about we say happy Mother's Day to all mums everywhere as well. This is the bit in the broadcast where I do a classic set, which is why I have to say sorry to Vitali. I don't know if you're still watching Vitali. Um, but he has been asking at least twice, I think, for me to do um, Yatagan, the old perfume from Caron, uh, which many of you will know. Some people reckon, I don't know how true this is, but, but, but some people reckon that actually it is Yatagan, and I think it's from the late 70s, it is actually Yatagan that is the first European scent to have featured a touch of oud. How true that is, I don't know, but I have it on fairly reliable authority, actually. Um, I can't do yet again, Vitali. I'm really sorry. David says, wave hello. Uh, Vitali says, yes, of course, I'm watching. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. I can't do yet again because I don't have my own bottle of yet again anymore. I, I, I gave it away. Um, it didn't actually work on me in the best possible way, but maybe this is a, a, a good time for me to revisit it. But I kind of started thinking, okay, yet again, where does that take me? Something in my personal collection that I could substitute. And I've gone for something that actually, weirdly enough, isn't hugely like Yatagan, but I think I thought, okay, if I were going for a Yatagan-like effect, impact, this is what I would go for. So what we are doing is, I think loads of people hate this, so watch out. I would like to do my classic one, Musk Kublai Khan from Serge Lutens. I suppose I should, I should be calling it Musk, Musk Kublai Khan from Serge Lutens. Uh, I have lost track of the form in which this is now available because I know for a while it was out in the main range, then I think it became a Paris only exclusive, even though exclusive was always a weird word for those ones because you could still get them anywhere in the world by ordering them from their website. Then I think it came out briefly in a limited edition in these standard bottles. And, and now, of course, these bottles are no longer with us because Lutans have changed their presentation. And I don't, I don't actually even know what Kublai Khan's current status is in terms of availability. But the Serge Lutans website will tell you all you need to know. Let's have a quick sort of response. How many of you are aware of, of this one? Um, affectionately known as MKK, as I'm sure many of you will be aware. This is this is going to turn into a skank fest here now because of course we had the um, the 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 Indian perfume the musk amber named after my friend Umbreen. Um Where can I put this now? Let's pop that here. Ooh. <laughs> Alain says never could find MKK along with Fumerie Turc. Oh really? How hard did you try? Did you really put your mind to it, Alain? Or did you just like give up at the first hurdle? I smelt incontinent wearing this. <laughs> I, can't, I can't top that description. And you know what? You probably did smell incontinent because only in our... Um, Hildegan says, love it, wonderful beast. You see, divisive. Somebody says, no, it smelled like I've, you know, sort of decided to soil myself. And somebody else goes, yeah, give me the poo. <laughs> what I was going to say is, it's only in this wonderful field of perfumery that 
that we you know smell these things that you know it has to be said smell pretty ghastly in some ways and then go yeah 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 bring it on give me more give me more give me more of that poo. <laughs> what does it say about us um but of course it isn't it, it doesn't hit me with poo. <laughs> okay um the, the, the face of the facebook algorithms the bots are probably going to start Re rejecting this video now on the grounds that it's some kind of probably got some kind of scatological fetish thing going on about it um okay but to, but to be fair to this what i think is a masterpiece you know real masterpiece by christopher sheldrake who um has done the vast 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 majority of the perfumes for lutans it it isn't just like sticking your head in <laughs> a certain room in your house um Although it does have it, it, it has a is it it has a huge huge um, fecal animalic civet note. It, it it's in the uh, Luca Turin Tania Sanchez book I think that there's also an equally poetic description where they talk about a, a camel rider who hasn't washed for whatever it is I, I, I forget for um, weeks or something like that. Um, so yes, it 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 is. Right, if you're still there, by the way, I don't, I'm not quite sure what happened because I got a weird message from Facebook just now saying that the video cut out, but now it says I'm back, so go figure. Maybe, maybe you guys need to reconnect or something. Um, or maybe, may, maybe maybe it was the Facebook bots. Maybe it was the Facebook algorithms not liking the fact that we were using the P-O-O -O word. Who knows? Who knows? Facebook is quite sneaky, as we know. Right, but why why is this a masterpiece, and why um, does it have this status amongst perfume lovers? I would say it is because it's really bold. Too much poo, man. Yeah, see, I'm doing it again. Too much. Don't say unless you're talking about a friendly yellow bear. That's what it is. This smells of Winnie. The it's just a cuddly bear. Although actually that's not a bad description. It is like a cuddly bear. This is this is what you would want to wear if you want to smell like a cuddly bear. I'm not going to be rhyming anymore in today's broadcast. It's a, it's an extremely well judged musk note. But fascinating to compare with the Indian one because this has got a a, a metallic facet. I remember when I reviewed it in my uh, book, um, I, the, the image that, that I kind of wanted to conjure was that of somebody doing their ironing. You know, that, that very, very particular smell of steam that comes into contact with the metal creates a really, really striking singular effect, almost of silver-lined steam, metal-edged steam. Uh, Bertrand Duchefort tried, tried and succeeded to capture a very similar sort of effect when he made, when he made, Sartorial for Penhaligons. And Muscovy Khan for me has got that. So, so maybe, you know, if it is meant to be uh, inspired by Kublai Khan, maybe this, there's this idea of the, the, the metallic riches of his possession. So maybe it's meant to make us think of gold, silver. I think it completely does. But the, the image that I used in my book was of somebody doing their ironing while themselves being in the nude because they're doing their ironing they're being very careful about where they place the iron don't worry they're doing their ironing because they're ironing the clothes that they want to wear and so this this idea of something slightly naughty the steam the nudity itself because it is a very intimate smelling perfume it's all done so well here that there's a beautifully judged spice facet um, and I'm sure, I'm sure there is loads in the top. You know, I'm sure there are very, there's a very clever use of citruses here, probably a very clever use of florals, because there is something that is just lifting all of this and giving it tremendous presence and volume and um, a great deal of incontinence. Um, I don't have a huge amount on this, but the little that I do have Oh yeah, it's from 1998, which is another reason why I thought we could do it now, because it's, it's celebrating its 20th anniversary. Um, and all I've got is a list of notes. Uh, civet, uh, castorium, so a very leathery note. Yeah, I should say leathery as well, completely leathery as well. Labdanum, ambergris, rose, cumin, 
cumin, the spice that if you if you are smelling a perfume that and you may, and you're thinking that it smells a bit of sweat, then that probably means it contains cumin, costus, and patchouli. All of those really really heavy, woody, intimate, sweaty materials. Um, but that's my classic pick for today. So Vitali, I hope that's good enough. By the way, Vitali, do you know? Seeing as I was kind of keeping you in mind when I was doing this because I couldn't do that again. Do you know uh, Moscow Black Khan? And if not, do you have a favourite from Lutin's that maybe you would care to share with us? Oh, it's becoming quite fecal now, actually. It is good, though. And sometimes when I want this kind of an effect, when, I'm, um, when I want people to think that I work as a plumber, I uh, also wear Kiel's musk, which works in a similar kind of way. But I think Kiel's musk is maybe not quite as sophisticated smelling because despite everything we've said about this one it does still retain a sense of sophistication it, it, it's got this idea of somebody who is actually sophisticated who wants to unleash a kind of inner beast okay i've been keeping you for far too long but i would just very very quickly like to do one and i wonder which one it should be i i've, I've got this one out by the way because um I'm not going to talk about this one now, but this is the latest in the blue Mediterranean range from Aqua di Palma. It's called Quinotto di Liguria, and I've just, I'm just showing it to you now because this is the one that I have just published a review of on my blog. It came out a few hours ago, so please do read it. I rated this one very highly. I thought, I thought it was a wonderful um, hot weather scent. Really, really nicely done. Um, uh, the other thing I should have said as well is that when I do this in two days' time, uh, oh, comment from Vitali. So far, my favorite from Lutens was Cherki. Yeah, I love that one too. But I will go and try again the NKK now. Um, what I should have said, when I come back to do this on Sunday, it's going to be largely this, the, the same layout. I don't want to change things too much. I really wanted to be able to get to do the, the this Garlin, the Meteorite, but maybe I want a little bit more time with that one. So I'll tell you what, why don't we do a show part? Because I don't think we've ever done one from here. These are little baby samples that I've got of uh, a new range from them, a quartet. So let's just say, so there's a jasmine, an orange, a rose, and, and, and a honey, miel d'arabie. What are we thinking? We've mentioned jasmine. I'm intrigued by honey. Let's try honey. If, if, it's, if it's good, then, then um, we'll do some more tomorrow. And we always try to do the last one really, really quickly. Okay, so right, let's see. Oh, it's not a spray! <laughs> right. The main smell I'm getting, by the way, from these blotters as they're wafting towards me is the Indian one, the musk amber. Um, which is also interesting, bearing in mind that it's an oil. Um, actually, as this is the last one, I'm not going to do it on the blotter. Let me just... I'll put some on a blotter. And why am I going to put some on a blotter? Because uh, regular regular viewers will know that after a few hours, I like to post a little update on Facebook of how the blotters have done. Because boys and girls, always remember, you shouldn't judge a perfume by its initial blast. And you need to know what it's going to smell like in a few hours, because that is actually the smell that you will be carrying around with you and wearing. That is why Persilase is good to you and does a blotter status update after a few hours. Roger says, Tuned in. To, what did I miss? Everything. You just missed everything. It's like being the best episode ever, Roger. You missed it. You missed it. But guess what? Thanks to the wonders of technology, you will be able to watch it again very soon. Right. Miel d'Arabie from Chopin. Roger says, shoot, no, it's fine. You're okay. You'll be able to watch it again. Sorry. It's kind of, um, you know, we were talking about pencil shavings and cedar and things like that. This is very pencil shaving. Not especially sweet either. Miel does mean honey, doesn't it? I haven't just made that up. Roxana says, is that good? Um, as in this. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Which is not what you want to hear from the award-winning perfume critic. But 
but I am intrigued. I'm intrigued that they, you know, called something honey. Ara maybe, you know, miel d'arabi, maybe Arabian honey smells woodier. Okay, yes, as, as a kind of woody scent, or at least starts as a... <laughs> okay, thanks, Roxanne. Um, it's intriguing. So I'm getting the cedar note. I'm getting a kind of dry syrupy quality, but certainly not sticky sweetness, which which maybe is a good thing. I suppose if I was getting loads of sticky sweetness, I'd be I'd, I'd be sitting here complaining, saying, "Oh, this is another sticky sweet concoction." So okay, shouldn't complain. But maybe what it is is that it doesn't smell especially multifaceted at this point. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to use the um, press release as a bit of help because um, so what is the idea behind these first of all? And seeing as we're at the one hour mark, I'm going to try and do this very very quickly. The this is called the Gardens of Paradise collection for heavenly fragrances made on Earth. Uh, from the Mediterranean to the East, the legendary gardens of paradise are the expression of the golden age of civilization. Mythical and mystical, peaceful and secret, traversed by rivers of water, milk and honey, these dreams, dream gardens were filled with the most beautiful, sweet-smelling and colourful flowers and fruits under the shade of majestic trees, etc, etc. Um, these were all inspired by the gardens of the tropics, which debuted at the 2017 Cannes Film Festival. Cannes is on at the moment. Uh, and all four have been made by Alberto Morillas, top, top, top veteran perfumer. Right, Miel d'Arabi, a haven of refreshing and sensuous notes, divine delight from the desert, reminiscent of precious spices, tea infusions, and sweet pomegranate. Okay, yeah, because pomegranate's got that kind of almost tannin-like sweetness. I'd go with pomegranate. Miel d'Arabi is textured with the floral and balsamic aromas of an exceptional honey extract. Noble and earthy patchouli, together with incense and cypress essential oils, further contrast and deepen this intriguing and unforgettable scent. I'd go with intriguing. And a quote from Alberto Marias, I wanted to recreate the peaceful and restoring aura of the oasis and its tradition of hospitality. I imagined the reassuring sense of vegetal ambers. Gosh, if we say amber one more time on this. And the notes are pink pepper, okay, which, which can be quite cedar-like as well. Uh, Provence honey. Fur absolute and incense essential oil. I'm going to reserve judgment on this one. It is interesting. I would still say maybe not as multifaceted as I might have hoped for from something because these are quite pricey. Uh, they are, yeah, a hundred mils of eau de parfum is 240 pounds. So we're talking high end stuff. Um, and that's my initial impression. Um, Ambreen Khan says amber. Yeah, nice one. Um, so, jury's out. Okay. Time to round off. So start saying your goodbyes now if you're going to say goodbye. Um, the Indian one, musk amber. Ooh. Oh. This is like every sin ever committed on the planet. No hope of forgiveness. It's so good. That's the Sukhanko one. Um, but by contrast, the aqua di Neroli is just, is just, you know, cherubs floating around, <laughs> passing, um, you know, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Absolving everybody's sins. But really nice, the Xenia, I like the Xenia, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm wear this. Um, what was that one? Oh, Stash, yeah, good old Sarah Jessica Parker. That's doing well too, you know, that's... It isn't, like I said before, it is not daft at all. The Musk Kublai Khan from Lutin's You Don't Need Me to Smell, and this one, yeah. It almost makes me a little th think a little bit of Chance from Chanel, which also had a pronounced cedar note. So, very, very quickly then, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. The next episode will be the day after tomorrow, 5 p.m. UK time, coming out on YouTube, but wherever the live broadcast comes from, the, the videos, the, the, the permanent copies of the videos will end up eventually on both YouTube and Facebook. Facebook. Uh, please feel free to ask a question, leave a comment. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please give me a thumbs up. It's been really, really fantastic interacting with you. I hope the presence of my friends hasn't been annoying. I certainly found it entertaining. 
Um, but until Sunday, be good and look after yourselves. Take care. Bye.